Hello, I'm the Beauty Professor, and you can find my beauty blog at www.beautyprofessor.net. Today I'm excited to do a quick video review and demonstration featuring the freshly released limited edition Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder Palette. So this is a new release at Sephora, and it's a limited edition release. I have talked about how incredible the ambient lighting powders by Hourglass are on my blog. I specifically own full sizes of dim light as well as diffused light. But when I heard that this palette was coming out, I could barely contain my excitement because one, I'm a sucker for powders, two, I already know I love this formula, and three, the fact that Three shades are in one streamlined compact. It's just too good to be true. So let me discuss what's going on in this palette specifically. As aforementioned, it has three shades of the ambient lighting powder. And these shades are dim light, incandescent light, and radiant light. And I'll be talking about what the undertones and other qualities of these powders are individually, momentarily. But just from the compact itself, it's in the beautiful signature glossy brown hourglass packaging. It's got a fabulous mirror. This mirror is just perfect for doing touch-ups on your entire face. I love the size and the fact that it gives me just a true-to-life vision of what's going on. And then, as I've mentioned, the three powders are here. So I have some of the powder on my face, which I applied over foundation, but I did just the lightest bit, just so you could get a sense of it right and away. And then I'll show you how I apply the three different shades when I am using it initially. Put a word or two on the shades. Dim Light is a peachy beige shade that looks very subtle in the pan. Here it is swatched on my wrist. You can see it doesn't really impart a lot of color, but on the face, it is just so finely milled that it does an amazing job of just evening out skin tone without depositing or adding a lot of color to your perhaps existing complexion or existing foundation. So dim light is great for light to light medium, maybe even medium plus complexions. Any darker than that, and it might be that dim light will show up as too light, but if you are really on the fair side, dim light would be a much better warmth inspiring shade than it would be an all over face powder. I fear it would be too dark. Then there's incandescent light in the middle and this is so much my favorite shade here. This is a beautiful pearly pink. It has some palpable shimmer or luminosity and it is a limited edition shade. They do not have incandescent light in the full size. I don't know if they're going to be bringing that out but I just love how this is just a pale pink it doesn't add a lot of color to the face, but I treat it like an all-over highlighter. And I'll show you where I like to put it on my face, but it's just beautiful. And then there is Radiant Light, which is the darkest of the three. You can see it's almost the color of my skin tone here on my fingertip. It's kind of a bronzy, shimmery powder, and it's got beautiful yellow undertones. I wouldn't say that it morphs into anything orange, but it does bring a palpable warmth to the face. So it's great for contouring, treating it like a light bronzer. If you're looking for a shade that will warm up the face without being too over the top, then Radiant Light is an excellent option. Briefly, I wanted to mention that I am wearing another hourglass product on my lips and that is the Hourglass Opaque Rouge Liquid Lipstick in the shade Canvas. And I picked this up when it was released late last year. It is a very opaque, kind of semi-matte, maybe to a satin finish, rosy color that just brightens up the lips without being too over the top. It was one of the more neutral shade offerings in this line. But this formula is phenomenal. It just gives amazing full coverage in a single pass and while there is kind of a matte thing going on my lips never feel dry or cracked as I wear it so there are hydrating properties that make your lips look soft and supple even though there is kind of a matte translation going on. So back to how I like to apply this palette. 
Starting with just a kabuki brush here, I'm going to go ahead and take some of the radiant light, which is the darkest shade, put just a touch on to my brush, and then I'm going to treat it like a bronzer or a contour. So that will require me to do a signature face look. That allows me to find my cheekbones more easily. And I'm just going to sweep it on. So you can already see that while it's adding a little bit of pigment, it's also mattifying nicely. And that powder effect is just well executed. Somehow it removes excess shine while still remaining luminous. Bring some down here, a little bit across the top of my head and through my jawbone area. There we go. Okay, that's enough with the radiant light. Now I will go ahead and put a little dim light on my nose. I still have some excess shine and I don't want to put bronzer everywhere. So I'll use a little bit of that to just kind of clean this area up. You can already see shine's been removed without a whole bunch of color being deposited. The beauty of these powders is, is that they allow for your skin to look like it has been perfectly lit, that you're dealing with ideal lighting when perhaps that's not actually the case in real life. So they're carefully crafted to look extremely natural. They're not meant to be a big statement powder. And I love how finely milled they are because they just disappear into the skin. And then I'm going to take my brush yet again and just dab it into the center color, which is the incandescent light. And I'm going to sweep it right under my eye area to brighten things up. You can see how the light is catching. You can see how the light is being caught in that area where I've, I've applied it. But it doesn't look too shimmery. Certainly it doesn't look glittery. Just bring some in here. And then I'm actually going to use my finger to add a little bit more in a more precise way across my brow bone. To, and this is where I would typically apply a highlighter, whether it be powder or cream. You can bring some in this zone close to the edge of the eye. And if I want, perhaps a little bit more in the corners. And the piece de resistance a touch in the cupid's bow, which does create a, an illusion of additional fullness in your upper lip. Not too much, just a touch. And there you have it. Here's just a close-up of the powder on my face. I'll try to get as close to the camera as humanly possible. Yikes. Here we go. You can see that despite having added more than I even normally would, it's not cakey, it is light reflective, and the radiant light is doing a good job of standing as a light bronzer or a contour. And that was the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Palette in Action. So as I mentioned at the start of this video, this is a limited edition product. I'm not certain how long it will remain at Sephora, where it's currently being sold, but I, all the literature I've read on this does confirm that it will not be around so for If you're already a fan of these powders or you've been wanting to try them but couldn't decide which shade to get, I highly recommend this palette because it gives you so many options in a single container. It's streamlined enough for the part. And truly, each powder has a really specific use, so I don't feel like there's overlap or waste, and I really appreciate that. I truly hope you enjoyed this review and demonstration, and I do look forward to your questions and your comments. As always, please don't forget to visit me at my beauty blog, Beauty Professor, which can be found at www.beautyprofessor.net. Take care.